Centuries ago, the Hittites were little more than a whispered name in biblical texts, mentioned fleetingly as figures in Canaanite stories. Skeptics dismissed their existence as mere myth. Yet in the late 19th century, a discovery rewrote history. Unearthed from the sands of Anatolia came the ruins of an empire, a civilization whose diplomatic and military reach rivaled Egypt and Assyria. Today we delve into the mystery of the Hittites. Who were they? What led to their rise and fall, and how did they fit into the complex tapestry of the ancient Near East? The origins of the Hittite Empire begin around 1900 BCE, when Indo-European tribes migrated into the heart of Anatolia. These people, later known as the Hittites, established their capital in the city of Hattusa. Situated in a strategic position near major trade routes, Hattusa became a center of power and commerce. The Hittites built an empire that thrived for over five centuries, from roughly 1600 to 1180 BCE. But their journey to dominance was not a straight path. It began with a series of smaller kingdoms, often at odds with one another. The Hittites were not alone in Anatolia. They absorbed influences from local populations like the Hatti, who predated them in the region. It was this fusion of cultures that set the stage for the Hittites' rise. Their empire would expand, but only after centuries of internal struggles and external threats from neighboring regions. One of the most notable early kings was Labana I, who established the early foundations of the empire around 1680 BCE. Under his successors, including the great warrior king Hattusili I, the Hittites launched military campaigns against neighboring powers, paving the way for future expansion. By the 13th century BCE, the Hittites had become one of the dominant military powers in the Near East. Their influence spread across Anatolia, northern Syria, and into Mesopotamia. Their most famous military encounter was with the Egyptian pharaoh Rameses II at the Battle of Kadesh in 1274 BCE. The Battle of Kadesh is one of the best documented conflicts in ancient history. It pitted two of the ancient world's greatest armies against one another. The Egyptians relied on their swift two-man chariots, which allowed for greater mobility. The Hittites, on the other hand, had larger three-man chariots, designed for a more powerful assault, allowing one man to drive while the others threw spears or shot arrows. Both sides claimed victory in the battle, but neither could decisively defeat the other. Kadesh remained under Hittite control, while Rameses returned to Egypt to declare a great triumph. The truth, as always, was more complex. It's more. The Hittites are not just a subject of archaeological study. They play a recurring role in the Bible, often as characters on the fringes of Israel's story. We first encounter them in the book of Genesis, where Abraham negotiates the purchase of a burial site from Ephron the Hittite. Esau marries two Hittite women, much to the dismay of his parents. Later, during the reign of King David, we see Uriah the Hittite, a loyal soldier who is betrayed and murdered by David after an affair with Bathsheba. But who were these Hittites? Were they remnants of the empire builders of Hattusa? Or were they a smaller, local group? Perhaps connected to the Neo-Hittites, who emerged after the fall of the empire in the 12th century BCE? Scholars continue to debate whether these biblical Hittites are the same as those found in archaeological records. One of the great puzzles is reconciling the archaeological evidence with biblical accounts. Archaeology tells us that the Hittite Empire collapsed around 1180 BCE, following waves of invasion by the mysterious Sea Peoples. The city of Hattusa was abandoned, and the once mighty empire splintered into smaller, independent city-states, known as the Neo-Hittites. However, the Bible mentions Hittites during the time of Abraham, which is centuries earlier, in roughly 2000 BCE. This discrepancy has led to theories about the biblical narrative being a retrospective projection, where later writers included the more famous Hittites in older stories. 
Other scholars argue that the Hittites in the Bible refer not to the empire builders of Hattusa, but to the Neo-Hittites who lived in the Levant centuries later. After the fall of the empire, Hittite culture did not disappear entirely. Instead, it survived in fragmented city-states across northern Syria and southern Anatolia. These Neo-Hittite states retained many aspects of the old Hittite culture, including their art, religion, and language. Cities like Carchemish and Aleppo became centers of Neo-Hittite power, exerting influence over the region well into the first millennium BCE. Recent genetic studies have shed new light on the complex relationships between ancient peoples. DNA evidence suggests a deep connection between the ancient Canaanites and modern populations in Israel, Lebanon, and Jordan. Could it be that the biblical Hittites were part of this broader Levantine population, intermingling with the Canaanites and later Israelites? Despite decades of research, the Hittites remain an enigma. Were the biblical references to Hittites an anachronism? Did the Neo-Hittites continue the legacy of their Anatolian predecessors? Or was the Hittite presence in Canaan more complex than we can currently understand? The story of the Hittites offers a glimpse into a forgotten empire one that straddled the realms of archaeology, myth, and scripture. Their legacy, though fragmented, still resonates today, reminding us that history is rarely straightforward, and sometimes the past holds more mysteries than answers. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. If you enjoyed this documentary, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more in-depth explorations of ancient civilizations.